So I have two long fixing screws here. They're actually screws from one of these uh, film advance levers. And I know that if you've only got one camera, you probably haven't got spare screws. And I know that's not fair, but life's not fair. That's the way things are. So this goes on from the bottom. This goes in that gap as previously mentioned. It's lowered down and gently into position so that the drum goes over the other into the right position and at the top I'm going to pull back this chrome trim to allow the front to drop in a bit. Now I've still got probably six millimeters quarter of an inch gap at the top and lean in move the mirror down push the mirror down and then lower this into place that's if you don't do that, the mirror will be trapped on the wrong side. Nothing will happen. Nothing good will happen. I can put two of the original screws in at the base here. And all this depends on those cleverly stacked washers not tipping over. So that everything stays in place. And these longer screws I'm putting through the top here to keep my washers in place. I can already see that they've moved on this here. And I don't know whether I can push that back into shape. Oh, it's not looking good. If you're going to have trouble it's probably going to be this corner that gives you trouble because the meter's got a strong magnet in it. Oh, they, 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 it's not looking good. What I'm trying to do is get my three washers neatly stacked on top of each other and I'm not having much luck. Of course I can only see through this tiny letterbox slot of a gap. Okay. That's a curve. And the alternative, of course, is to take the front back off the camera and start again. My enthusiasm for that is limited. So, I'll just take a dressmaking pin here and see if I can use that to probe and get my washers back in line. Yeah, they're dancing about. That's to do with that magnet. Oh, I've got something going on there. I'll put the screw through there. And then I'll give it a bit of a rattle to make sure that there isn't that I'm seeing three washers and not two. I think that's okay. All right. So the front's loosely sitting in place. The cam you can see through here. The cam is pushed over, it's not engaged correctly, so I've got to push that across to get it to drop into place in the body. That just dropped in. If I press the shutter release, that was the mirror coming up. Let's see what happens if we cock it. That just dropped in, I just felt that tooth engage. Let's see if the shutter will cock. 
that's not cocking all the way we're one tooth out now I know that that screw had already been the cam had already been adjusted forward quite some distance so I don't want to adjust it any further than that not as a start position so I'm going to remove the front of the camera now and have another go now this sort of behaviour is just par for the course with a retina reflex and you just need to be patient things just do not go as smoothly as you would like let's run that shutter down Cocked. I'll just cock that shutter and release it again. It's cocked, it's released. Yeah, that seems okay. I'll review these washers and so forth. Yes, that one certainly had fallen out of place. That might have been after I'd taken this apart again. Get my washers stacked back up. This is why people resort to sticking these things down with wax. Because they're, they, get, they get impatient. Checking that everything is other, good still, that the spring, we didn't never disturb the tension of that spring. Or oh, well did we? We should have done. Is that correctly tensioned still? Yeah it is. Okay. Well that's good. I'll have another go. Yeah, a little bit of yeah, we'll just try that again. Probing to push the mirror down out of the way. Now this was a stack of washers that was keenest to get away, so let's trap those now before we get any further into it. And it's mate at the other end. And the two normal screws at the base. Get those washers all lined up. Alright, in from the top. See if we can push that cam across. It seems okay. Let's see what happens. This time we have success. Okay, so that's good. So I'll just loosely tighten these up, run these two bottom screws up lightly. At the top, I'll replace these longer ones with the original screws, one at a time so I don't lose my washers.
and we can put the pinion shaft through that couples to the front control rings. So these screws I'm just doing up very lightly. See how we go. That shut is working nicely. Let's try it with a self timer. Hold in the lever here, shift the self timer. Shutter is closed. I'm waiting for it to open and close for the exposure. Yeah, that all happened smoothly enough. Open the back of the camera, check that all the functions appear to be happening. The capping plate comes down. That's all good. So far, so good. That needs to go in. And that. Now this will couple to the front control rings of the camera and it couples to the meter drum. Now I'm just running some molybdenum paste on this. You could lubricate this shaft just as well with synthetic grease or anything else you happen to have. It was vaguely greasy. And now I've got to get that to drop into the slot and it did, it just about fell in. I used to always fight with those, I'm not sure what it was that I was doing wrong. The little pinion here, I'm running some grease through there. Right, at that stage I've just set that the B position, I've got to set my lens plane. My, uh, Lens flange to film plane distance now. I better find the gear. I have a pressure plate here I've modified. These have been machined out so that this sits flush down on the film rails, not hovering on the top of those points there. So that sits down there at the film plane. Got a cable release. Cock the shutter, fire the shutter, so the shutter is now open on B. Got a vernier here with a base on it, and our magic distance is 47.6 millimeters. So I've got to measure this in multiple points and make adjustments to my four screws until I get everything reading the same. And everything is much bigger than that at the moment. So I can do these screws up at half a turn, I would say. As a start. Forty-seven point seven six. 47.76 47.75 so we're miles away still let's give it a quarter of a turn and see what I've got Six seven forty seven point six seven forty seven point six eight forty seven point six six. Let's give it another quarter of a turn. Forty seven point five five, so we've overshot at that point. Forty 
reckon have we got there? 47.58. So we've overshot and I can loosen those screws up slightly. Well, you can see the process. I've just got to shuffle these screws and try and measure this at four points across here and have them all equal at 47.6 millimetres. I'll be back when I've achieved it. It shouldn't take long. That's all done. Um, not much to tell you really. I just backed all those settings off slightly and hit it first time all round. Suspicious really. Anyway, that can come out. We're done with that. So we've set our lens flange to film plane distance. And what's, what's happening here? Oh, suddenly my film advance doesn't want to move. I've got to investigate this. I think the top of my camera had lifted slightly with the uh, cable release because it wasn't screwed down at this end. So it may be that the release lever is out of position. I think actually that that was the top floating as I said but it was this lever the lock lever was lifted slightly which of course would lock the film advance let's put a screw in the top of this uh, in this top cover and see how it behaves I think that's the correct screw let's run that in And put this screw back at this end for good measure. Now it's locked again. That's a little bit odd. Oh, okay, I'll have to investigate this. Sometimes if there's a problem, when you apply tightening screws at the front of the camera, it compresses stuff. And I wonder whether that flash wire has caught behind the pinion. I'm going to have to investigate that. Okay. Might have the front off this again yet. Just, just thought of something else. Let me just see if my frame counter was too far advanced for this particular cocking rack. That could do it. You can tell I don't want to take the front off the camera unless I absolutely have to because once you've you've got it to this stage you're pretty much on the home straight typically no that's just jamming there's something really wrong there okay investigations are in order that's odd as soon as I lift the top off it's good something is not Uh, it may be my release lever. If the screw on the top of the release lever is too high, that would do it. I'm going to have a, a little look at that. Just gave that a turn or so. Of course, I don't want to disturb my meter, which is busy looking disturbed 
let's try that that will also do it that was it My, the screw on the top of the release shaft was too high so that it was when the top was being held down firmly the shutter release was resting on the top of that release lever and it was preventing that from popping back up to allow the mechanism to return in an ideal world the shutter should fire at exactly the same part of the stroke that the film advance releases in that case I was able to get the film advance to release before the shutter fired which means the screw is still too high and if I can sneak a small screwdriver in here and give that further adjustment and I'll try that again until I get it correct Yep, still releases the film re advance before it gets to the shutter. So I'll have to have a, one more attempt at that and then I'll come back. Well, here are our control rings. This is the lever that opens the aperture to full aperture, and um, as it releases, it allows the aperture of the lens to close right down. This one here is our shutter speed set dial. That's pretty grimy. Here we have this coupling ring because the two aperture and the shutter speed dials counter rotate. This has got a little wheel on it which causes them to counter rotate. Both of those dials have teeth that engage with that wheel. This being the, the aperture ring here and this being the front. Now all of these pieces need to be cleaned. You can see that they're very dirty and dusty. And this piece in particular gets corrosion on it and it gets reluctant to move. It gets quite stiff. And if the front rings are stiff, it's very hard to adjust the shutter speeds and it certainly doesn't feel nice to the touch. So I'll clean all these, the usual drama, naphtha and cotton buds until I've got them all clean. Okay, starting with this piece, that spring needs to hook into this little catch there. Oops, it's come off its post now just to annoy me. It really is out to get me today. It loops opened up a bit, so it's not gripping that stud as well as it should do. Right, if I stretch that spring out a bit, I can get this tab to fall into that slot. And that works reasonably smoothly there. I'm going to put a little bit of graphite powder in there and work that. So I want that to move, move very freely.
it'll just drop a bit in there and work this round and round the graphite pad will find its way in between the the working surfaces that feels better and excuse me while I go and blow that all away okay next stage this piece, I usually give that a very light white with my lebdenum paste, um, hardly anything at all, inside and outside, top and bottom edges. This goes on, there's a little notch in here to help you get it over that pinion. Of course, if it doesn't go on square, it sticks, and then you have to say rude words. Okay, that's in position, and its start position is right there. No, it's just some mark on there. I thought it was a bit of dust, but it was not. Okay, that would be ready to go onto the camera. This is the piece, as I said, that will open the lens to full aperture for viewing when you cock the shutter. And I'm just, again, rubbing over that with my and paste. And there was very little there. This is the shutter speed settings ring. Now this needs lubrication at this point. That notch couples to our set it speed setting lever and when this dial moves around far enough it lifts out of there and slides along that track. So our shutter is set to be, I can put that on there, with this lined up so that the notch in the end of the notch in the brass track lines up with that slot in the aluminium there. This ring here coupled so that its third tooth is in directly in line with the pinion. Bit of a gap at the top about that much. All I have to do is lift this onto the shutter without disturbing anything. And we're good to go. Yeah, I'm giving that a bit of a wriggle. Things aren't seating. Yep, yeah, they've suddenly seated. Okay, that appears to be good. And there are three screws that hold this assembly together. The long one, which goes down in that position. And I can see my video camera is quietly shouting in the background that it wants a new battery. So this is a race against time to get these three screws in place and check to make sure that things function correctly. That all looks good, changing the speeds. We have our shutter speeds. You can see how they counter rotate nice and smoothly. We set our shutter speed, turn the wheel at the base of the camera, you'll see that the meter moves at the top and the aperture scale at the same time as we change our settings. So, that looks good. And I better change this battery.